Hello everyone. I'm back with another chapter of Geography, Class 7, NCRT. Chapter 5, Water. In this chapter, we will read about water, distribution of water bodies, ocean circulations, waves, tides, and ocean currents. In the first page, we will read about evaporation. It is a process by which water is converted into water vapor with the sun's heat. And when the water vapor cools down, it forms cloud. And later on, it may fall on the land or sea in the form of rain. From an examination point of view, it is important to remember that the major sources of fresh water are rivers, ponds, springs and glaciers. The ocean bodies and the seas contain salty water. And the water of the ocean is salty or saline as it contains large amount of dissolved salts. Most of the salt is sodium chloride or the common table salt that you eat. Coming to the next topic, distribution of water bodies. It is a factual stuff that three-fourth of the earth's surface is covered by water. And it is funny as it may seem that if there is so much of water than land, then why do so many countries face water scarcity? That is because amount of water which is drinkable is very less. Fresh water is very less. Going to the next topic, ocean circulation. Just try to imagine the feeling of standing on a beach exposing your feet to the ocean water. The wet sand on the beach, the cool breeze, the sea birds, the smell of the salt in the air and music of the waves. Everything is so fascinating. And the reason behind that is ocean water keeps moving continuously. It never stops. Unlike ponds and lakes, they are calm water. But ocean water, they keep on moving. And the terms given to their movement are categorized as waves, tides and currents. Let's read about each of them in brief. Waves. When the water on the surface of the ocean rises and falls alternatively, they are called waves. During storm, the winds blowing at very high speed form huge waves and they may cause tremendous destruction. Now usually these large amount of ocean water are shifted by earthquake, a volcanic eruption or underwater landslide. And the resultant of that is a huge tidal wave called tsunami. Now on the other hand, tides are a bit different. They are the rhythmic rise and fall of ocean water twice in a day is called a tide. So in a tide, there is a pattern. It happens twice, thrice or four times in a day. And the waves are regular. They keep on happening every now and then. Tides are a bit different from waves. So tides can be high tide and low tide. The usual reason behind tides are strong gravitational pulls exerted by sun and the moon on the earth's surface. So during the new moon, that is Amavasya, the sun, the moon and the earth are in the same line and the tides are highest. These tides are also called spring tides. Now when the moon is at 3rd or 7th phase, which is also called half moon day, the moon is at 90 degree angle when compared to earth and the sun. So due to this position, the gravitational force of the moon pulls the ocean water diagonally, as a result forming low tides. Now some of the advantages of tides, high tides are, it helps in navigation. The rise in the water helps the ships to arrive at the harbor more easily. It also helps in fishing. When there are high tides, the fish gets thrown away to the shore and it's easy for the fishermen to catch them. And more practically speaking, the rise and fall of water due to tides is being used to generate electricity in some places. Coming to ocean currents, ocean currents are streams of water flowing constantly on the ocean surface in definite direction. So again, they have a pattern. So they move in a definite direction. The ocean currents are of two types. One is the warm ocean current and the other is cold ocean current. So if you look at this picture, the red color arrows indicate warm ocean current and the blue indicates cold ocean current. The warm ocean current generally originates in the equator because the sun rays fall directly on the equator and that area is usually warmer than the other. So the warm ocean current is generated near the equator and they move towards the poles, that is the south and north pole. On the other hand, the cold ocean currents, they are generated near the pole area where it's freezing cold and they move towards the tropical area, which is the equator side. So you can see all the blue arrows moving towards the equator and the red ones moving towards the poles. Now the ocean currents has a huge influence on the temperature condition of the area. The ocean currents are cold, then the area near it, the landmass near it or the continent that is near to that ocean current will have cold weather. For example, Canada. All the ocean current near Canada is cold. Therefore, it is freezing out there. Similarly, warm currents bring warm temperature to the landmass. Have a look at this world map. Look at those red arrows which are nearer to the landmass. The places that are closer to those red arrows are the places with warm temperature because red arrows in indicate warm ocean current and warm ocean current influences the warm temperature of the landmass. Now the areas where the warm and cold currents meet provide the best fishing ground of the world. 
Now try to look for the places which are nearer to the red and the blue arrows because those are the ideal places which are good for fishing because there you have both the combination of warm as well as the cold current and warm and cold current is an ideal place for fishing. Now the areas where a warm and cold current meet also experience foggy weather making it difficult for navigation. With this we have come to an end of chapter 5. If you like the video consider giving it a thumbs up and leave a comment below. And make sure you are subscribed you'll get an alert when my next video comes or if you want me to make anything specific do let me know.